Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 137 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. On our midweek show today, we want to uh, welcome a new Patreon patron, as well as uh, debriefing this past weekend's town hall that was, uh, I think Bob and I are still flying high about that and hope, uh, hope that you are as well. Of course, we've got our Knife Life News segment and then the State of the Collection it's Bob's birthday, so uh, we're going to find out about his birthday purchase for himself, as well as some other things, and of course, take a look ahead at uh, tomorrow's Thursday Night Knives, and next week's interview show will give you a little hint about who that might be, so uh, again, another full full show this week, Bob. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, it's never, uh, it's always surprising that we never run out of things to talk about in the knife world. I mean, it, you know, it's an exploding place. Always a fun time, a lot of knife stuff, a lot of knife news. That's, of course, our Knife Life News segment. But uh, we want to start off the show with uh, a thanks uh, to a new uh, gentleman junkie. Uh, Yeah, Ryan B. We have Ryan B. And uh, he just joined, uh, just became a patron on Patreon uh, for the Knife Junkie podcast at the $10 per month level. And, uh, man, we really, really appreciate it. That, uh, That money is going to help us improve the show it's going to help us pay for the show and pay for the bills <laughs> yeah yeah and we and we really really appreciate it and for your trouble sir you are now entered into the uh, monthly knife drawing on most months you know august is a weird month it always is in business and everywhere else and it, uh, that's no exception here uh, but most months uh, on the third thursday of the month on thursday night knives we will be doing a knife giveaway uh, for the ten dollar level, the gentleman junkies uh, in the um, in the Patreon group. Now, uh, if you are a lady and you are listening, uh, or or a gentlewoman, uh, gentleman junkie just refers to the style of knife, like the gentleman knife. Our mid level is the tactical junkie, and our uh, starter level is the traditional junkie. So uh, that that's that's the moniker. Uh, that's right. the meaning of that. So if you're a lady, that doesn't mean you can't be a gentleman junkie, right? Well, and you were saying, you know, August is always a difficult month with uh, business and a lot of Mm -hmm. folks uh, do their vacations during the month of August because of different things. And uh, the third Thursday this month is not going to be the Knife Junkie Patreon uh, knife giveaway. That's going to be August 27th on that Thursday Night Knives show. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're going to (laughs) have we're going to have a little, uh, well, uh, summer vacation. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. And All that's right. cool. It'll it'll uh, refresh the refresh, get more wind in the sails uh, for the next week when we give away that super awesome K Bar Doghead uh, night. Mm, looking forward to that. There's still plenty of time again for you to uh, join the Knife Junkies Patreon at the uh, ten dollar a month level. That's the Gentleman Junkie, of course. Be entered into the monthly knife drawing giveaway for a knife. While we're uh, talking about stuff, man, we just uh, feel like we've got to talk and got to debrief this past Saturday's Knife Town Hall Show and Sell edition, which uh, kind of the the moniker that we gave it, Show and Sell. Some of the knife uh, folks that came on had some knives to sell, and they did. That was really cool. And uh, some of them didn't have knives, but it was still just a fun time for them to uh, come on, talk, and uh, interact with the the viewers. Yeah, yeah. And and, uh, like they might be doing if they were at Blade Show telling people what's coming up in the next year. So uh, the the whole idea of the town hall this time was that it took place on the Saturday of the rescheduled and c- then recanceled <laughs> Blade Show. So uh, it just an opportunity for viewers and listeners to talk to some knife makers, ask them questions and see their work, you know, up close and put it right up to the camera. You can see what's going on. And, uh, it was a forum for buying. If if anyone had anyone to sell, anything to sell, uh, like Andrew Demko, for instance, sold a couple of 80-20s uh, to a couple of our viewers. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I, I, I'll hint at this and I'll talk about it in the state of the collection, but another uh, knife maker um, made a sale from, oh, 
well, someone very close. <laughs> someone I.E. on the show who wasn't me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that will be cool. And I'm sure I'll be talking about that for a long, long time. So I'm just going to let that dangle. We had Douglas Esposito from Attention to Detail Mercantile. We had Andrew Demko. We had Alan Elishowitz. Uh, Bastian Coves from uh, Bastinelli Knives. And uh, man, he, he did his interview in his shop uh, and in his little showroom. And it was so cool because he had a wall of knives that we could ask to see. Uh, it was great talking, catching up with him. We had David C. Anderson, friend of the show. And a uh, man you might know from the Knife Center, but also uh, he has Nordsmith Knives, his, his really outstanding line of outdoor knives made by L.T. Wright. Uh, we had Marianne Helpern from... Uh, the legendary Three Rivers Manufacturing. Always great to talk to her. And we had Sanford Owen uh, from Monterey Bay Knives. And he came on and showed off some of the new things. And man, they have so many new things coming out and a real bright future for them uh, right. as, as, and for the collectors of their knives. They just seem to uh, have a great formula for coming out with a very, uh, very well-made Beautifully designed knives from coveted designers, uh, uh, you know, in a way that a lot of people can afford. Well, if you uh, didn't uh, have a chance to join us live this past Saturday for the Knife Junkies Town Hall Show and Sell Edition, you can catch the replay on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. We also have created a playlist. Bob, this was the third uh, town hall that uh, that we've done. Yeah. So we've actually uh, created a playlist on uh, the YouTube channel. If you missed uh, any of the first couple, I think the first one was uh, April 18th, I believe, where we had uh, almost 20 knife makers and manufacturers on. And then we had a special one in June with uh, Andrew Demko and Greg Lightfoot. So uh, any of those uh, town halls that you may have missed are now a playlist on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel, again, at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And, you know, Jim, these are three and a half hours. Uh, you know, the first one was five hours long. Like these are long shows. Right. And they are, uh, I, it's like I lose time because, uh, not only are these really interesting people that we're talking to and hearing from, but all of the interaction with the viewers and listeners, uh, in live, you know, in real time, uh, really keeps me going just having the comments pop up and then the comments back and forth between viewers. Right. Uh, to one another. I love that. And then uh, say, for instance, when we have Marianne Halpern on, a lot of our viewers know her personally from from <laughs> calling her up and begging for knives or whatever, you know, right. uh, know her personally. And she's a very you know, warm individual. So to get all that uh, that interaction between viewers and between the guests and me and the viewer, I love that. It just it's like having a party. Well, if you have any uh, suggestions about uh, who you'd like to see on the, the next Knife Town Hall, which uh, we do not have scheduled at this time, we had talked about early on maybe doing one every month or every six, eight weeks, that kind of thing. Give us some suggestions uh, who you would like to see on a Knife Town Hall, and uh, we'll look to put that together. You can email Bob at bob at thenifejunkie.com or uh, give us a voicemail at uh, 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, back on the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 137. And it is time now for us to catch up with news in the knife world. Uh, several stories, Bob, that you want to talk about. Uh, Leong Ma, maybe the, the first one that you want to address? Yeah, Leong Ma, uh, just such a great and prolific designer of folding knives. Uh, he's a chef. And, uh, so his, a lot of his knives have real utility to them. And then others have, uh, not only utility, but, but, uh, a real, oh, I don't know, charisma to them. And, uh, the Lanny's clip is, is kind of chief among them for me anyway. I think it's such a compelling and, and just handsome knife. Now, the Lanny's clip is, is a, knife pattern that comes out of the traditional knife world. Uh, Tony Bowes, a, a legend in the uh, traditional knife uh, making world, created a knife for a friend, a clip point knife, and it just has a real uh, a real uh, signature look to it. It's a, a single bladed clip point uh, knife with a, a bolster and uh, a kind of uh, extreme clip point. Uh, extreme isn't the right word, but uh, you look at it and it, it has a very classic, uh, traditional clip point look. Uh, that's as far as I'm going to go. 
Uh, but Liang Ma in 2017, I believe, uh, came out with his version of it, you know, giving it the Liang Ma treatment uh, with the titanium and the carbon fiber and the micarta and uh, the, the high-end steel. And uh, he added a little bit of a tanto uh, to his tanto grind, but not in profile. It still looks like a clip point in profile, but you got that flat up front and then you have the hollow grind on the main edge. So he came back out with the uh, came back out with this knife uh, just recently, a, a version two of it, uh, where where he kind of updated the blade shape to how it, to what I just described. And, uh, you know, it's got that. 3.25 inch blade and the bolsters and I think it comes in four different handle styles uh, a couple of micarta one straight titanium with a sort of uh, jigged bone look to it uh, and a faux bolster and then carbon fiber and uh, these things are just beautiful I, I uh, if I were to get a Liang Ma after the eraser it would be the Lanny's clip the eraser I just have a, a real uh, affinity for but this okay. knife, what do you think of that, Jim? Kind of looks like it might be up your alley. I like the, um, in the picture that we're looking at on the knife news story that we'll have uh, linked in the show notes at thenifejunkie.com slash 137, thenifejunkie.com slash 137. I think it's a tie between the, the top one and the one underneath that. I like the uh, yeah. the handle on the top one, the the really natural looking wood grain look. But then, but then the second one, the... Uh, I don't know what kind of ha uh, handle it is, but the you know the that's the, full the, titanium there. Yeah, the yeah, I like the striations or the pattern or whatever in the handle. But then um, I, I like the uh, I like the blade shape. Yeah, yeah, me too. And and in the second one you're talking about, Jim, the titanium one, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's a real. This is a case of the real blend of traditional uh, look with modern materials and, uh, and updated manufacturing. Cause mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not a real bolster there. And, uh, obviously that that's a pattern that's milled in there to look like wood grain, but it's in space age titanium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the biggest, uh, update to this, uh, he used to use, uh, I K B S, uh, bearings in this, I believe, but, uh, everyone, the the world was clamoring for a captured uh, ball bearing pivot system. So this uh, they answered that call, and this is the uh, called the Shield Pivot, and I think it might be an acronym because I see it here in all caps. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that might be it. But uh, yeah, beautiful knife. Look for this uh, coming out uh, in twenty twenty. Not sure exactly when did they say this is going to be. Looks out? like so it's coming out soon. But yeah, they didn't give a date. Yeah, yeah. soon, right. soon. Who knows what that means? Yeah. All right. Moving on to Terrain 365, which was a company I've learned about recently, as you've uh, talked about it once or twice here on the, on the podcast. Uh, they've got a, a new folder based on a Bob Loveless knife. Yeah. Uh, so Terrain 365, I'm starting to hear more and more about them. But part of their hook is they make knives that are corrosion resistant, uh, like completely corrosion mm -hmm. resistant. They have their own cobalt alloy um, and, and they... Uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Terravantium, which to me sounds like something you harvest on another planet. I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so Terravantium is their cobalt alloy that they use for blades that does not rust. And uh, then they uh, house it all in titanium with titanium uh, hardware and such. Uh, that's what they do with all their knives. This knife uh, here is the STS-AT, and it's based on the legendary Bob Loveless's uh, shoot knife parachute knife that he made for a friend harry archer and it was uh you know a knife that you had to be able to cut parachute line in a pinch with mm -hmm. and you look at it and it's a, a beautiful clip point blade uh, it's very aggressive looking but utilitarian it's got this incredible handle that reminds me a bit of the prometheus um blade works uh the prometheus blade works knife that uh protec recently did an iteration of it's got a fluted handle pretty neutral uh, contoured from top to bottom and uh, just it looks like all action with a pointy tip so you can uh, you know break some glass or drop it on the floor or drop it on my toe yeah once I break it yeah exactly but uh, yeah so this it's got this really nice looking elongated swedge and and a blade that just a 3.5 inch blade that just looks like the the uh, the loveless you know harkens to the loveless uh, shoot knife so mm -hmm. just a really cool looking thing here. And I, I like the fact that Terrain 365 has a mission to make these 
tools that are totally corrosion resistant and that they have their own alloy, Terravantium. Well, again, uh, looking at the picture on the Knife News story, which again, we'll have linked in the show notes, I, um, I'm almost getting distracted by everything else in the picture trying, <laughs> trying to focus on, on the knife. But I had one question. Uh, remind me again what that little, um, is that the, the like a stud, thumb stud or something that right at the, the base of the blade, right at the handle at the top? What is that yeah. thing sticking out? Is that the, uh, that's the, the thumb that's stud? It. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's the thumb stud to open, okay. one hand open. That's funny that you say that about this picture because uh, I've been looking at this picture too thinking um, I, I would have zoomed in. I like all the tactical gear around it. There's like a uh, climbing harness and, an, and uh, uh, a, a climbing ice pick kind of thing yeah, yeah. and a sweet watch with a compass on it and rope and all this stuff. And It's, it's cool, but yeah. Yeah, the knife gets a little lost. I'd zoom in, but hey uh, – Maybe they could send me a Teravantium uh, bladed uh, STSAT, and I'll take a picture of it for me. Yeah, yeah, do a nice review and a video. That would be nice. Yeah, Train Three Sixty Five. If you're listening, that's uh, email Bob at Bob at the dot com. Work something out. Oh, that was shameless. <laughs> I, I really didn't mean it. <laughs> like it sounded, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, this one did, did come out is uh, supposed to have been available uh, last week, so uh, should be uh, out there on the market if you're interested. Um, hopefully it uh, is still available if it, uh, didn't go quickly, but again, that's uh, terrain 365 with their, uh, their newest folder. It is a damn good looking knife. I swear it, it, it really does look like something, um, uh, military spy, mm -hmm. uh, adventure, you know, bread. It's pretty cool. Right. All right. Finally, in uh, Knife Life News, Bark River Knives with a new run of V44 Buoys or Bowies? Bowies. <laughs> I say Bowies. <laughs> you're, you're a North Carolina boy. Up up there in Ohio, we say Bowie. Uh, so V44 Bowie, uh, it is uh, a knife that they've made before. I'm just saying it because I, I, I love it. And, you know, I've been on this hunt for a new Bowie recently. And a number of people have emailed me, you know, because I, I asked for suggestions. And yeah. a lot of people mentioned Bark River. And my response was kind of like, eh, I don't really like Bark River, but, you know, they haven't made the the kind that I like in a while. Um, and so, I, you know, I'll look elsewhere. And plus, I'm, I might be uh, tempted to baby it and I want something that can be a uh, – well, lo and behold, they, they re-released the V44. Now, the V44 is uh, the, the Marine Raider Bowie, if you're familiar with that uh, profile. Uh, it's the – it's the Bowie blade that's got the kind of a uh, severe scooping clip, and then it's got a very deep belly. So the, the blade widens out towards the tip. It's just, it's very cool. It's it's the same bla uh, blade pattern that, uh, if you're familiar with Inglorious Bastards, that Brad Pitt had. The knife that he had was basically the same uh, blade profile of this knife. They just came out with a new one, so go check it out. And you know Bark River Knives, they uh, release knives with many different handle options uh, in terms of materials, uh, all different exotic woods and micartas and stacked leather, very beautiful uh, handles on the Bark River Knives. But on this particular knife, you can either get a straight handle, like a uh, military handle, stacked leather or micarta or, or wood. Or you can get what's called a Moran handle after Bill Moran, the legendary knife maker. And it's a more contoured handle. It has more of a um, horse hoof profile, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and, and kind of locks into your hand in a different way. Allows for maybe some uh, uh, choked back swinging and chopping uh, where the straight handled kind of military style might not. Sorry, I got I was mesmerized looking at the pictures. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I think now you uh, see what I mean, sir. <laughs> yeah, I, I like just the 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 standard basic one that, with the stack leather leather handle. I you know it it's it's really nice looking the handle and the uh, what is that not gold but uh, brass uh, mm -hmm. kind of cap end and the brass what is that middle piece called guard? Okay, you could call it a finger guard or you could call those. The things that extend up yes. and down are called quillions. Okay. And uh, I like how the top quillion is sort of uh, facing forward. So you can yeah. kind of put your thumb against it if need be. And then angled the other a little bit. It's kind of angled back to keep your, yeah. Yeah, to protect your hand. Uh, so, yeah, the the, uh, the Marine Raider Bowie was used in the South Pacific. It's a big, gnarly uh, Bowie blade. It's kind of interesting to think of, you know, 
of, of that being carried on someone's kit. Uh, but you know, we all know that kit was a lot heavier back then. Uh, but it, it was made for, you know, jungle area because you could use it for a lot of different things. It's small enough you could use it to fight with, uh, heaven forbid, but also big enough you could use it for clearing brush. Right. Uh, the original ones had sort of a bird's beak handle so you could choke back on it and swing it. It was also used, I discovered, in um, in the survival kits of some uh, aircraft. Uh, I know that uh, I just saw, randomly uh, came across an old auction site where someone was selling an original uh, V-44 uh, Marine Raider Bowie. And it was uh, carried by the guy, uh, by a nose gunner of a B-24 Liberator, you know, bomber. So also it seemed like something big and heavy to be uh, cramming yourself with in an airplane. But, you know, you crash yeah. that airplane, you're going to need that knife. So. Right, right, exactly. What's the, uh, is it a hole in the, in the butt, the cap in? Oh, yeah. It's like a lanyard. Okay. So. Maybe tie extra, something to it as opposed right. to a lanyard. Well, the extra grip you might get from the Moran handle, that contoured handle, that you won't have with that straight handle, you could add a lanyard and then wrap it around your wrist or around your hand and get that same retention. You know what I mean? So a, a straighter handle, I would want a little hole on the end so you could put that cord through. Hmm. So. Okay. So uh, Bark River Knives with a buoy or Bowie. Terrain 365's uh, new folder based on uh, Bob Loveless Knife and Liang Ma has a uh, revised version of his most popular Lanny ver- uh, V2. So uh, several stories here in Knife Life News that, again, we'll have links to all of those, uh, which has pictures and all that kind of good stuff on the show notes at thenifejunkie.com slash 137. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, happy birthday to the Knife Junkie. I'll say it early because you're going to be gone next week when your birthday is. We're not going to be having a, uh, a a Thursday Night Knives show next week, August 20th, but we will still be having our Sunday and Wednesday podcast episodes. So uh, I'll say happy birthday now, but probably will later as well. But I say that because, well, like you do, I think pretty much every year I've known you, not only do you get birthday gifts, but you buy a birthday knife for yourself. Yes, yes. It's like you know, rewarding myself for being such a good person over the year. Such a Uh, good boy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, it, it is, uh, it is grasping at straws. It is justifying a purchase and my birthday happens to be the closest justification. So we're all good at justifying. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah, I guess, yeah, that's kind of, you know, in your defense and we're going to talk about your, your birthday knife. It was because of the knife junkie town hall that was uh, this past Saturday, August 8th. And there were not every knife maker had knives to actually sell on the show, but they were still showing off some things, that kind of thing. It'd be you'd be hard pressed not to buy a knife after seeing that show. Yes, yes, I I agree. And, um, you know, someone that I've been following for a while, had him on the show a couple of times, had him on uh, the uh, town halls a couple of times. Douglas Esposito, he's a, a Virginia knife maker. Um has a, a uh, an outfit called Attention to Detail Mercantile. Um, very interesting guy. Uh, incidentally, he's a former Marine. He has an incredible uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu school uh, out in Manassas, uh, Virginia. And it's a beautiful facility. And he's a, uh, you know, a coach and has a, a competition team and everything like that. But in the back, he's got a really cool knife shop. And he recently expanded it and got a CNC machine. And started making folders as well as, uh, you know, I, when I started following him, he was just making fixed blades. These are beautiful fixed blades. And actually, my birthday knife two years ago uh, was my very first custom knife made by Douglas, uh, this double-edged fighter with the tortoiseshell handle that I'm always showing off. Um, but I've been really interested in his uh, progression into folder making. We did a special show where he came on uh, Knife Junkie Podcast. And we talked about just that. His uh, sort of evolutionary jump, if you will, uh, from uh, folders to or from fixed blades to folders, and uh, I love his design. It, like he he locked in on one design, and then there have been variations of that. Mostly, hey, he's got a couple of different designs, I should say. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but the one that he's really uh, uh, honed in on, the Mark One, he's got a number of different sizes and styles, and uh, 
I've been watching him make them. And then since he's gotten the CNC, he's been making them with all of these really cool textures it milled into the uh, titanium uh, one he calls barbell it's like the knurling on a on a barbell uh and then he's got one that uh looks like a frag pattern and number of other contoured ones and then ribbed ones it's just very very cool things he's doing with his handles and uh man uh, about two weeks back on instagram he posted a large version of his mark one that had that was almost fully inlaid so it, Picture two contoured titanium handles and then almost a full inlay. So, so it's, it's shadow boxed or, or framed with uh, natural tan canvas micarta in the middle. So it's like all of my favorite things all in one spot with this beautiful, you know, done in such a way, uh, that it, it just looks beautiful with that inlay and everything is so tight and, uh, and seamless. So anyway, I've been obsessing over that thing over and over and, and, uh, during the town hall, this past weekend, I asked him to show it and he didn't have it with him. It was like far afield and, and that made me sad. So uh, <laughs> I kept thinking about it after the show and then I got in touch with him and asked him to hold on to it for a day for me. So, I could... so you could uh, sell some knives? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And that's the next thing. I'm going to be selling a couple uh, just to cushion it, you know, and uh, and a couple of, of these knives people might be surprised by. Like I'm going to sell my, my tops uh, cut. 4.0, which is such a cool fixed ba- uh, blade karambit that I love and I talk great about, but every time I try and carry it, I, I just don't carry it. Hmm. So, something I should move along to someone who right. will carry it, and uh, there are a couple others like that. Well, as we've been uh, talking over, you know, the past 136 episodes of the Knife Junkie podcast, you've kind of refined your collecting to include that that one caveat that it should be a knife that you carry, not necessarily every day, but at least carry occasionally and that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. if it's not fitting in that criteria, then, yeah, it makes sense to sell it, even as painful as it might be. That's right. That's right. And if it doesn't, uh, I mean, the, the longer and longer we do this, the more uh, blades I receive as gifts uh, or the more I buy knives from knife friends that I've made on this show. And those are things that I'm not going to get rid of, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to get rid of a knife that my wife bought me, even if I don't carry it. Right. So, so that that instantly grows the collection. But in terms of the things that I spend my money on and that I want to keep, yeah, you're right. Uh, things that have meaning to me. Maybe I've met the maker at this point, which is so cool. Uh, but other than that, maybe I've I've uh, traded with someone that I like for that, or you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just uh, the the criteria keeps shifting, but I do know that I I want to refine the stuff I'm keeping. All right, do you have a uh, a, a picture or anything like that of the new knife that you're going to be getting, or anything uh, that we can share in the show notes? Perhaps. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I you know Jim, I'll send you a link to the, uh, the there's like a full spread, twelve pictures on the attention to detail mercantile uh, right. web page. Oh my God, this thing. I, I'm going to be the talk of the town, Jim. I'm going to pull this out. People are like, who is this guy? And what is that knife? It's so cool. It's so beautiful. We'll, uh, we'll include that uh, link on the show notes. And uh, who knows, perhaps uh, Knife Junkies, uh, you may wind up with uh, one from Attention to Detail Mercantile as well. And I know there was a lot of interest when uh, Douglas Esposito was on the show. A lot of comments talking about especially the uh, The mirror finish on the blades, I mean, he was showing some of those and it was just incredible. Well, actually, uh, that, that was a trick of the camera. The, the, the thing, the thing of the grind that we were talking about was that he, he does a beautiful hand rub, uh, finish, which is nice, but that high and tight grind, it's a hollow grind that goes almost as high as the blade. It's kind of like a full flat ground, but, but it's not flat. So, uh, yeah, that was making it that unique thing was making it look like a mirror. It really was. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. And that Cylon edition was cool, too. Well, anyway, check it out. Hey, uh, you talk about uh, new knives and loner knives and all that kind of good stuff. As you're getting more and more involved in the knife community, uh, ther- uh, ther- uh, uh, if I can talk, a Therapeutic <laughs> Edge uh, loaned you a SOG Seal XR to uh, get your first impressions on. And I'm sure we'll be seeing a video soon. But yep. uh, thoughts on on that knife? Yeah, Peter from A Therapeutic Edge, he's got a great uh, uh, knife channel on YouTube. You should definitely check it out. He, he's he got tastes um, uh, similar to mine, definitely. Uh, uh, in it, They intersect in a lot of different ways. Now, 
Peter's a big guy. He's got giant hands, you know, and so he likes giant knives. And I also like giant knives, even though I have, you know, just average sized hands. Um, uh, so he had the SOG. He, he showed off the SOG Seal XR. So this is a new folding version of the classic SOG Seal knife, the Seal and the Seal Pup, uh, which um, when SOG was going down the rabbit hole of fromage if you will uh the 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 seal uh, and the sog <laughs> the sog seal pup and the seal knives always kind of stayed pure kind of uh, action driven knives without uh, a bunch of billboarding and, and cheesy features uh so that line to me always stayed pure and this is sort of a pure extension to that this is the folding version of the sog seal pup so it's a nearly 4 inch blade and a beautiful um, Bowie, sh- uh, Bowie shaped blade and I'm not going to go too into describing it as I could because I'm looking at it right now but this is such a marked upgrade to what they've been doing over the past uh, you know bunch of years 10 years maybe and I know a lot of people are talking myself included we even had um, we even had Sog on the on the podcast uh, they have they have made such a great change back towards making great knives but this Sog Seal XR uh, tactical folder is just man it's it is a a quantum leap for them i would say s35 vn steel in a thick sturdy frame uh using a uh crossbar lock or you know axis lock style thing they call it the xr lock and their iteration of it on this or their execution of that on this knife is outstanding uh, as good as any Hogue or Benchmade that I've uh, that I've ever experienced. Uh, I can't say that about all the XR locks. The XR lock on my uh, on my uh, terminus is is kind of janky actually, but on this uh, Sog Seal XR, uh, it's outstanding. Uh, it's a flipper, and flipper XR lock or bar lock style knives can be tricky sometimes. Uh, this flips out great, like it has a regular detent. Uh, from a you know like a, a frame lock or something like that it it flies out in a different sort of way sometimes i find that flippers on bar locks feel a little lazy this jumps out um it's got a great gr- glass breaker pry bar the clip says sog on it in, in big sort of uh intaglio letters but it actually looks cool it works it fits uh it's the one big billboard but it's it's subtle and it's utilitarian you know it's it's in a utilitarian spot and looks pretty utilitarian. And I got to say, I've, I've never, ever experienced in my life a more jimped knife. <laughs> Anywhere on the, on the dorsal or pectoral surface of this knife uh, that you could possibly grip, you have jimping under. So as mm-hmm. far as your thumb can, as far as my thumb can reach forward on the blade, in mm-hmm. the top swale, it's jimped, which I love. And then continuing onto the handle. Uh, the, the frame is, uh, the liners are jimped and then that transitions into fully jimped backspacer. You go around the butt and actually there's a, a glass breaker so they didn't jimp there, but then all along the rest of the grip on the bottom side, including the flipper, all jimping. It's pretty cool. I could see how it could get annoying on bare hands after a while if you're using this, uh, uh, using this hard, whatever that means to you, uh, for a long extended period of time without gloves. Uh, that could get a little bit annoying, but uh, with gloves, man, this knife is never ever leaving your hands. Plus, the knurling on the side of the handle is pretty extreme as well. Um, one uh one little hit I would give it is, uh, if I were to design this knife, I would stop after maybe the second finger choil or the first. I prefer one or two at most. This has uh choils for all or swells grooves cut out for all four fingers, and to me. If it's in this sort of extended saber grip, like I'm, like I'm uh, fencing with someone, it, it feels comfortable. My fingers kind of fall in line. But if I have my hand further up towards the blade and have my thumb on the back of the blade to do like a power cut, my fingers actually group into the first three, mm-hmm. uh, not only making me feel like a puny man, uh, <laughs> but you can feel those, uh, you can feel those ridges that separate the finger grooves kind of poking into your fingers a little bit so that's the my one thing i would make the handle just slightly more neutral on the dorsal side other than that this thing is 
it's just such a cool knife. And Peter, uh, thank you so much for uh, sending this along to me. And uh, folks, definitely go check out A Therapeutic Edge. It's got a great channel. And we'll uh, try to put a uh, link to A Therapeutic Edge YouTube channel in the show notes, as well as uh, perhaps a picture of the SOG Seal XR. If Bob can remember to write a note on his hand and uh, send me that picture, we'll uh, we'll get it in the show notes. And uh, we'll also uh, have links to... um, Not only uh, SOG, the uh, Knife Junkie podcast that uh, Bob did with Jonathan Wagner from SOG. That was the knifejunkie.com slash 112, the knifejunkie.com slash 112. But uh, as Bob had talked about earlier with attention to detail, we'll have a link to that particular knife or the page that has several of those knives that he has uh, gotten for his birthday gift. But also uh, we'll include a link to... uh, two different podcast episodes that Bob did with Douglas Esposito. One way back on episode number 25, that's the knifejunkie.com slash 25. But then the more recent one, which was uh, the knifejunkie.com slash 60, the knifejunkie.com slash 60, that featured Douglas Esposito as well as Stacia Jennings, uh, his uh, partner there at Attention to Detail Mercantile. And we'll have all those uh, links in the show notes at the slash 137. Visit the Knife Junkie online at the knifejunkie.com. Do want to remind you that a great way to help support the show is by getting the Get Upside app. It's free and it'll help you save money on your gas purchases. Just uh, whenever you need to fill up the tank, search your area for savings on gas. You find the, the savings, you claim that discount, you fill up your tank, and then when you're done, Just simply take a picture of the receipt on your smartphone, and just like that, you've earned cash back. So get the app today if you don't have it already, theknifejunkie.com slash saveongas, theknifejunkie.com slash saveongas. All right, Bob, you have been dying, I think, to let the cat out of the bag about next week's guest on the Knife Junkie podcast interview show, Ed's Manifesto, Ed Calderon. You have just been... Every every show we have done since that interview, which was a couple of weeks ago, you, you you've been alluding to it, and you're you know yeah. you're call style <laughs> knives and all these kind of things, and so you've probably been wondering about the the fruit knife all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I had a very interesting and uh, really awesome conversation with Ed Calderon. Uh, you might know him from Ed's Manifesto. He has a a, a website uh, blog where he discusses um, lessons he learned being a, a, a narcotics agent for the Mexican special police on the northern border of Mexico uh, in the 90s and 2000s. Really fascinating guy. And also has a um, not only a, a, just a whole lot of stories from that time, but also lessons learned from that time in terms of security, h- how to handle a kidnapping, and how to handle a knife. And he has a, a knife uh, design called the Elvia uh, that has uh, been made by a number of different makers. Uh, Emerson makes a folder of it most recently. Copus Designs makes a fixed blade version of it. And uh, Rick Lala, uh, the the uh, Brazilian custom maker, has a really cool version of it. And a number of other makers, uh, JB Knives and, and some others that are eluding me now. But uh, there are these Pical style, that's tip down knives that you use with the edge in uh, and they're meant to be used in extreme close and grappling kind of situations. And uh, it's sort of a, a, a different sort of tool than the knives we collect and uh, you know, carry in our pockets. So mm-hmm. uh, anyway, it was a fascinating interview. I had a really great time uh, meeting him and, and uh, yeah, I felt uh, like I, I and everyone else who listens to it can really benefit from that podcast. On that again, it's coming up, uh, coming up again this Sunday. That's our interview show. That'll be episode number 138. It'll be coming out uh, Sunday afternoon. But of course, for our uh, patrons of The Knife Junkie, uh, you'll get early access to that. You'll have access to that interview on Friday. So another reason for you to join the Knife Junkie Patreon account. And I Hope that uh, you will take advantage of that, not only for the uh, just the sheer joy of supporting the show, but also for the early access and bonus content and stuff like that still to come. So Ed Calderon coming up on this Sunday's interview show, the uh, Knife Junkie podcast. And of course, Bob, tomorrow, Thursday Night Knives, uh, another great show. And uh, 
uh, if folks want to uh, make sure they uh, they join in and uh, share comments and share topics, uh, because again, we're going to have the the week off on August twentieth, so you'll maybe have to kind of stock up on on knife talk on <laughs> Thursday night knives tomorrow. Yeah, definitely get your fill, man. You don't you don't want to be caught with an empty tank halfway through next week. So there you go, there you go. So let's, uh, you know, who knows? The the shows have been going longer, uh, you know, hour and a half, even two hours. So, uh, you know, if you want to come on, if you got a topic, uh, shoot Bob an email, Bob at com, or give him a call at the listener line. Leave a message, 724-466-4487. Anything you'd like to talk about, questions, comments, those kind of good stuff. We'd love to hear your feedback. Okay, Bob, we are almost out of time. We are running out of time. We're almost there. However you want to say it, it's it's kind of the end of the show. Final thoughts, final words from you as we wrap up another midweek supplemental. Just uh, keep an eye out for uh, a sales video, Jim. I think this time I'm going to mm. do. I'm, I'm coming. I'll, I'll go to Blade Forms if I have to, but I'm going to try another another crack at a sales video. They never seem to work for me, but uh, oh. well, keep your eyes out. There might be a couple of cool things you might be interested in. Okay. Well, maybe we'll uh, do some advanced publicity on it on uh, Instagram and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, maybe we should have talked about that before so we could timed it out and promoted it here on this podcast. But yeah, uh, yeah. well, th- there might be a couple of them to come. And it's also something I'd like to keep somewhat spontaneous so we can just pop them up there. And then, and then you know, people who f- kind of first come, first serve it. I don't want mm. people, you know, clamoring and sniping and, you know, these knives are in high. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're 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 confusing yourself with Marianne Halpern at Three Rivers yeah. Manufacturing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. has those problems. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. But uh, yeah, stay tuned to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel uh, at the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And uh, you never know. It might, it might be a great uh, reason for you to subscribe. So you'll and click that little bell notification so that uh, when Bob does put up these sell videos, you'll be among the first to to get notification of that. So thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, and subscribe to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. All righty. So for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person, thanking you for joining us on episode number 137 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. We'll be right back.